press briefing, key findings of the new report e-democracy in Ukraine, citizens and key stakeholders' perspectives. Our guests are Danka Tomkova, advisor on e-governance, e-gap program, Natalia Girashenko, expert of Innovation Center, Andriy Semenchenko, National Academy of Public Administration under the President of Ukraine, and also Dmitro Hutki, Hutki, manager of the Group of Electronic Democracy, of Reanimation Package of Reform, and also Maria Boguslav, ex Executive Director of Skills Academy and Platform New Country. Um, Ms. Erdanka, you are given the floor. We are here in the context of the e-governance program on accountability and participation that is funded by the Swiss Development Corporation. And we are glad to be sharing with you some research findings um, of series of analytical works we have conducted in uh, the past year. Um, firstly, we have done a quantitative analysis with the partnership of the Kiev Institute, International Institute of Sociology. And there we wanted to know what is the civic temperature on e-democracy in Ukraine. As you know, the topic is fairly new. Um, it is very interesting, it is topical, uh, but we found that a lot of people still in Ukraine are unfamiliar with some of the key concepts. So we conducted a national-wide uh, poll, a public opinion poll on e-democracy and e-governance. So that was one stream. Uh, and then from that research came a few interesting streams where, as I said, we found out that Ukrainian are still um, quite uh, unaware about what the term e-democracy means. Um, and secondly, um, what we also found out that internet usage is going up in Ukraine from 2009 to 2014. Um, it went up from 28% to 57%. So actually there's more usage. Uh, but what is interesting is what people actually do with internet. Uh, and there we found out that people are using it mostly for looking for information. But as you know, e-democracy is more than for looking for information. It is also using primarily um, technologies and other uh, also offline instruments to uh, participate in political life, to participate in communities, and to also monitor and hold government accountable, uh, to mobilize together for common actions. So we wanted to see how that works, but we can see then in Ukraine from the first uh, survey uh, that the majority of Ukrainians are still using uh, information uh, communication technologies for one-way interaction. It means consuming information rather than actively using tools to participate in political processes. Um, so this was one really important finding. We also found that actually there is not uh, a big of a gender divide in terms of usage. Um, women and men are equally using internet. In fact, women seem to be using internet even more so. 52% of women versus 48%. But there is a, a geographic divide. Uh, people from uh, rural areas are using internet less for very obvious reasons. There is low, uh, small infrastructure. Uh, and people in cities are the primary users. So this is something to think about um, in future policy making, how to ensure that people in rural areas will have equal access um, to, to information technologies. Uh, the other thing, um, that we found out from the key survey, some general findings. I, I invite you to uh, look at our report findings, the full report. Um, is also uh, people are unaware. So 79% of Ukrainians were not sure or have not heard about the term electronic democracy. Uh, but when we ask them further, uh, if you were to define democracy, what does it mean for you? It was very interesting that their uh, citizens thought, I mean, 46% have seen or, or perceive e-democracy as a tool to communicate between each other. So horizontally, citizen to citizen, um, and the least with government. 
So, as you can see, it confirms uh, the, the previous point made that still participatory use of new technologies is fairly low in Ukraine. And chances are high, as we will find out from also our more qualitative research that we have conducted in the second part of the year, um, is that this is largely because the instruments are still lacking, although there are quite a few emerging. There has been quite a lot of, um, uh, let's say, improvement or advancement uh, with open data, with e-petitions um, and transparency over the past year. So th there's a lot of um, action actually now on e-democracy in Ukraine, which is very positive. However, still, uh, it needs to be pulled through to implementation so that people are aware that these uh, tools exist, that people actually use them, and lastly, that there is impact, that the tools actually mean positive social change. Uh, <clears throat> so the second part uh, of research uh, that we conducted in the second part of the year was more qualitative. Uh, we wanted to go deeper into the issues and we also found that key stakeholder groups are not necessarily conducted. We did not know what academia was specifically thinking about e-democracy. There there's a bit of research, but it is not cons uh, consolidated in one place. Uh, we didn't necessarily know what government thinks about e-democracy. We also didn't know what business, youth and media think about uh, e-democracy and civil society also. I mean, there seems to be the most action um, there, but still there is not a consolidated understanding of what key stakeholder groups think about e-democracy, what it means for them, uh, how they're using the different tools at different level, at national as well as local level. Um, and lastly, what are some of the future perspectives that the different stakeholder groups um, see for e-democracy in Ukraine? For this purpose, we conducted uh, um, in the co uh, sort of a series of stakeholder consultations, um, and we have our partner organizations that are that have been facilitating each of the groups. Uh, they were introduced at the beginning. Uh, as, uh, just to summarize, we have consulted six uh, consultations with academia, with government, with civil society, with business, and with media and youth. We, all, we think that these are critical catalysts for making e-democracy happen in Ukraine. Government cannot do it alone, uh, civil society cannot do, do it alone, academia neither, nor youth or media. They all need to come together to create a constructive uh, and productive ecosystem for e-democracy in Ukraine. So I would like to um, leave the word to, to our civil society partners, starting with academia. Uh, just to give you some understanding, uh, the consultations were done over a period of two months. Uh, we have consulted a total of 87 people, uh, approximately 13 to 20 people per focus group. Uh, and, they, and I will let each of the facilitators tell them uh, what were the key findings um, that they found in their groups, also why they thought that particular group was important, and what are some of the future perspectives for, um, for e-democracy for that particular um, stakeholder group. So I leave the floor first to Natalia, who is from the um, Center for Innovations Development, uh, uh, representing the academia uh, group that she was facilitating. Good morning, everybody. As it was already mentioned, I uh, uh, held a focus group with the academic and educational group, uh, focus group, we, and we clarified the attitude um, and understanding of the e-democracy in Ukraine. Uh, our participants clearly distinguish between democracy and e-democracy, although the participants emphasized that the word democracy uh, is a key. The democracy was defined as uh, uh, the thing which provides for the rule of law, transparency in making decisions, access of the citizens to the governmental information, 
um, well, a democracy is about uh, uh, the uh, communicational space allowing all the democratic processes and all the democratic uh, aspects to be fully implemented. The difference between e-governance and uh, e-government and uh, e-democracy uh, in the academic uh, focus group also was clearly uh, defined. Uh, the e-government, this is about uh, uh, um, uh, electronic communication with government, while e-democracy is about horizontal communication. Uh, also, uh, uh, my uh, participants understood e democracy as a moral responsibility. Mm. What were the advantages of using ICT for uh, democracy? They are obvious, but there are some risks and threats uh, related to e democracy, and, but they are uh, more uh, inherent in everyday communication. Um, uh, people differently perceive uh, uh, electronic communication, and uh, uh, that's why we should uh, be aware of this in implementing e-democracy. But despite uh, all the risks of online communication, uh, so we should nevertheless uh, uh, probably use it uh, because it has more advantages than disadvantages and is very important for e-democracy. Uh, the obstacles for e-democracy development uh, were uh, as follows. First of all, this was uh, the um, uh, habit to paternalism of the state among citizens, also the habit uh, uh, in uh, thinking, in understanding that all the problems uh, should be decided at the central level, then the centralized corruption and high concentration of power in one hand, an important obstacle for uh, the e-democracy implementation and one of the reasons which explains uh, uh, insufficient maturity of civil society this is a shadow economy uh, 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 and uh, there's a spread of shadow economy results uh, uh, in a situation that uh, uh, those who use uh, the revenues from shared economy, they do not wish to be represented in public space and publicly um, stand for their interests. Uh, so the main preoccupation uh, uh, for civil society and for promotion of uh, uh, um, e, e democracy should be raising awareness and uh, strengthening education among people about uh, the um, skills of e democracy. Also, participants of uh, my focus groups mentioned obstacles uh, and uh, they suggested to study more deeply major obstacles for implementation of e-democracy and uh, to develop a strategy for implementation of e-democracy. One of the important uh, results of uh, our discussion with academics uh, is as follows. Uh, they think uh, that uh, uh, focus group is uh, very uh, instrumental in uh, surveying the problem and uh, um, uh, 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 
and uh, they believe this is a proper instrument to improve understanding among people uh, or, or, and uh, to allow them to come more to more broad conclusions about e-democracy. And uh, thank you very much. I would like to invite uh, Mr. Andriy Semenchenko. Thank you. First of all, I would like uh, to uh, to uh, describe the factors uh, that influenced the survey. Uh, um, one of the negative factors uh, is uh, that public servants are not fully ready and insufficiently motivated for implementation of uh, uh, modern democracy tools. General statistics uh, uh, mentioned by Yordanka show uh, that uh, uh, seventy nine percent of population do not haven't heard about uh, e democracy uh, as for uh, modern i c t technologies uh, are used by our people mainly for uh services for getting services uh, 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 the least part of population use them to get news and only seven percent think that uh, they should be used to, for um, uh, development of democracy also currently we are e at the stage of new interest in transition period in line with the law on higher education requires uh, uh, development of new approaches to formation of competencies among public servants Uh, so we are formulating new um, curricula. Uh, we are also implementing IGAPA uh, project, uh, which uh, stipulates uh, for uh, e uh, democracy development. Uh, uh, it uh, uh, supports. Uh, upgrading of the skills of civil servants uh, and uh, the focus groups uh, that were held during the survey they contributed to implementation of this project what were the specificity of our work the major the major uh, membership of our participants uh, we had uh, we offered uh, uh, our uh, top uh, um, trainees uh, uh, de like deputy ministers to answer n 19 questions so we involved to this uh, survey civil servants of the uh, categories from two to three. These are from the uh, ministers, deputy ministers, up to the leaders of rayon state administrations. Unlike uh, uh, academic focus group, this uh, uh, category of civil servants Uh, they pointed out uh, to the 
uh, relation, a uh, close connection between e-governance and e-democracy. When it came to discussion about transparency and openness of the government agencies, civil servants uh, were, were uh, very proactive and very eager. But when it came to discussion uh, of involvement of business representatives, and uh, citizens to decision making, they um, showed less readiness uh, to uh, uh, to discuss this issue. So we came to conclusion that first e-governance should be e-government should be implemented, and then the e-democracy should be implemented. This was the model which was used in southern Korea as uh, for the major risks. What are the risks of the democracy in the view of civil servants? Uh, they see that the e, um, that major shortcomings might come from the imperfect legislation or uh, the um, novelties in legislation might be not supported with sufficient resources. And another big problem, another serious problem, the uh, problem of uh, uh, digital inequality. Uh, 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 for example, the uh, governmental bodies in rural areas, they are insufficiently technically equipped. Uh, also, uh, uh, that part of population which is at the age of poverty, they are unable to buy uh, hardware necessary for e-democracy and e-government. Um, and uh, also, uh, civil servants pointed out that before democratizing uh, connections, uh, relations with uh, business and citizens, they should become more democratic in from inside. Uh, I could continue further, but uh, uh, I have to stop. I run out of my time and. Uh, I am happy to give my microphone to Dmitry Hutki. Yeah. Dear colleagues, I'm happy to share with you our findings. As a sociologist, I organized online a um, uh, survey and uh, uh, coordinated work with NGOs. The NGO participants uh, are very much familiar with all that processes. Uh, electronic democracy cannot uh, um, exist per se. It should be founded on organizational structure, on institutional capacity. Under, only under these preconditions it can strengthen and flourish. Uh, uh, in Ukraine, this area is uh, underdeveloped if to compare with neighboring uh, countries. From the uh, electronic government, we have information. Uh, out of electronic democracy, we have just uh, Electronic petitions, uh, they are used uh, as a um, method of, uh, uh, as a method to point out to, to the 
uh, major problems uh, existing in society. And uh, the uh, figures uh, prove that this is only uh, 20, all, about uh, only 25% of those who know about this tool of electronic petitions. But those who know about this believe that it is important and useful. There are quite useful, uh, there are quite uh, successful petitions which had uh, passed uh, the threshold of uh, the necessary signatures and uh, uh, were taken into consideration by the Kiev City, uh, Kiev City Council. Uh, also, the uh, survey had proved uh, that uh, it will develop further. Whether uh, the e-democracy would exist in parallel with the uh, official authorities, and this will be just another channel to present the views of people existing in parallel with the government machinery. Or, alternatively, the um, electronic uh, uh, democracy will exist as uh, in a form of a dialogue between people and uh, um, the government. Uh, um, some latest initiatives, uh, like partnership open uh, government uh, had proved that uh, the uh, late the latest scenario is uh, possible. Uh, this uh, initiative, which I mentioned, uh, uh, covered uh, the multiple local projects. Uh, uh, pre uh, implemented by PRP uh, e initiative at the local level and, and uh, those uh, uh, minor projects are aimed at uh, uh, strengthening dialogue between local authorities local authorities and the ordinary people and now Maria Bohuslav so I would like to speak about the focus groups and the results. And I carried out these activities with the participation of youth. And uh, I would like to tell you about focus groups and one of the representatives of the media, the coordination of which is absent today. And that's why I'm going to speak about two target groups. Today, my colleagues told you a lot about general trends and uh, what the public think about the absence of democracy in Ukraine. And the youth is the most radical in its views. And uh, they express this opinion, so democracy cannot be electronic if there is no democracy in the country. Maybe this is radical view, but this is the idea of our youth, and we agree with this. And uh, we believe that uh, people under 25 um, considered as being youth, and uh, they do not see themselves as youth. They believe they are an integral part of society, they know languages, they know a lot in different areas. That's why they do not only want, but they are active participants in developing those instruments of e-democracy, and uh, they motivate the society, and they believe that the youth is the driver of the society, and we should pay more attention to the youth as the main target group of e-democracy and also on the whole in the society uh, as the driver of progress and uh, the main factor. Of course, there are some problems, lack of democracy, and uh, as we call it, pocket democracy, and we try to explain it in English to Erdanka, that we have bodies of power, we have 
institutions, but they are governed by oligarchic or political groups. And this is a problem for our society. And uh, through e-technologies, we can fight with this. So some people do not even think about the parties, the powers. They just want to solve their problems. They can vote for something or they can order something. And in such a way, we will build an information strategy. So not just say that democracy is great. We should promote instruments to solve daily problems, daily tasks of the people. People should understand the benefits of the system. So we can fight corruption through this e-democracy and uh, youth of the maturity of the public. They got tired of the populism, of populist terms about democracy, that all the candidates are democratic and everything is democratic. But then they face real problems. And there's lack of real instruments. And a lot was stated about it, and we analyzed as of November. We analyzed petitions that were registered at the president's side, and from many petitions, only 28 were reviewed, and only four got some result, so less than 1%. And of course, electronic instruments move forward and uh, local petitions are also in place, 50%. They get result. Now we have a lot of programs supported by EGAP, EGAP Challenge, and, and in the regions they have some teams that develop and propose ready-made instruments to form democratic civil society. If you see some rubbish, you can photo and send it. You can send a petition and tell people about legislation. So different methods, and different tools, of spreading different types of information about our life. Also, you may say about inequality and total unawareness of people. And the youth mentioned this. They have gadgets, use Facebook, different instruments, but there are many people who do not know about these instruments, and the media stated that we are interested in this topic, but we do not know, and we do not know how to provide quality information. We do not know all the details. And the information campaign and education campaign are integral components of the development of a democracy. And last year, there were focus groups, and we heard the opinion of the people, and we created several projects this year. There is Academy of Skills, there is a course of e-governance, you can look it up, and there is online course on e-democracy that is de developing now. And also, we know that people, they just do not know about the functions of their gadgets. They do not know that they can pay uh, electronically for their communal services because there is mobile internet. And our main task, and we carry out this work with EGAP and the Eastern European Fund to develop for four years an information campaign that will create some messages for those 80% of people who are not a part of this progressive community, for those people who didn't use or unaware, or didn't hear, and didn't understand these priorities. So we should develop 
electronic education. Also, we should create online videos, infographics, and to provide information by all means to the public and to show them the benefits of e-democracy. So we should have information campaign, education campaign, and we should involve people in spreading these instruments. Thank you. Thank you, Maria. And the floor is given to Vladimir Nochva. Ladies and gentlemen, good morning. I'm happy to present to you uh, outcomes uh, of our focus group uh, on from business participants and uh, to present the vision of the democracy by business representatives. While the academics expressed more fundamental approach to in democracy, the NGO group showed uh, uh, major problem issues in this area, then the business focus group uh, offered uh, more concrete uh, tools uh, on e-democracy development. Business representatives are more keen to um, practical actions, that's why uh, they immediately pointed out to the efficiency of ICT uh, tools uh, in implementation of e democracy. Actually, business in intermediary position between the civil society and uh, the government Actually, the business uh, offered each time three scenarios. Um, the first was that the government will use e-democracy in approaching people. The second scenario was uh, is that the civil society will start to work from grassroots and uh, um, reach the government and the uh, um, e government uh, uh, and e democracy was uh, seen as uh, the um, intermediary between these two processes. Also, participants of focus group offered such a metaphor. Uh, when you light uh, a uh, when you lead a light in a dark room, uh, this is similar to the electronic democracy. For business, uh, stability, infrastructure, absence of corruption, clear rules of the game are important, uh, as well as access to resources. And uh, from this point of view, e-democracy is very important for business. Of course, we cannot immediately use uh, the environment. And e-democracy can lead this candle in the darkness. Uh, and uh, slowly to develop a system um, via uh, electronic platforms of democracy. That's why participants of focus group pointed out to necessity to create such a platforms. Business can assist in creating such a platforms and uh, because it is interested in lightening the light. Uh, what is important uh, that uh, this uh, 
idea was expressed at the local level and in many um, cities uh, we uh, and local towns uh, businesses started to create such uh, reforms uh, electronic commerce uh, uh, improvement of communication processes inside business community this will be the side positive side effects of such uh, work on e-democracy e-democracy for uh, biz e-democracy is interesting for business representatives and they decided to build up uh, platforms where they can bring together the government representatives, local government representatives, NGO representatives, academics, uh, business representatives, etc. Thank you, dear colleagues. We have uh, three, four minutes for questions. Uh, Andrei Mihal, the Liberalism Institute. Uh, am I correct when I understand that the survey was finished in 2015 and based on the results you have done some further work? And uh, the second, uh, the Brexit had uh, proved that soon after uh, referendum, young people started to collect uh, signatures uh, uh, calling to repeal the referendum results. I can answer both questions. Uh, E-democracy cannot resolve all the issues if there is no real democracy in the society. One of the issues, uh, one of the problem issues in democracy in any country, uh, this is uh, the readiness of population to democracy, including e-democracy. I discussed in my short intervention the readiness of civil servants, but this is a general, more general problem. And uh, the second, not all the problem issues uh, should be uh, brought to attention uh, of the broad public. When you bring any problem issue to the attention of problem of broad public, you should clearly understand the risks. Uh, today we did not mention uh, such an important element of democracy as experts. The experts uh, should uh, uh, um, uh, share and ex deeply explain the uh, problem issues. Your questions, uh, what is happening with the research? <clears throat> I fully agree with you that it's important to use it. Uh, research is not interesting if it sits on the shelf or in somebody's inbox. Um, so what we're doing, number one, number one recommendation from uh, all of the stakeholder groups was to create um, legislation. There's legislation still missing. I mean, open data and e-petitions is a great step forward. So there will be implementation, as it was mentioned. That will be number one. It will be critical. And in the EGAP program, we are trying through our partner, Fondschidne Europe, uh, we are trying to implement or come up with also instruments at the local level. Because there was also in, actually, in uh, many of the focus group discussions, you know, there were a lot of discussions, which was fascinating, was also the focus on local democracy. You know, the democracy will not happen. This is where people are the most active. And this is where people need to really get instruments in their hands and to start acting and using them creatively. So we hope through a program uh, like, um, you know, EGAP, that we'll be able to assist in this. Um, secondly uh, is legislation. You know, there is no currently legislation for mainstreaming other instruments, such as public consultations. Uh, currently, there is an e-consultation or actually public consultation law being drafted. It's still at the cabinet minister stage. This will be very important that it goes through the RADA. This will be once more one of those two-way instruments. As I said, so far in Ukraine, there's one-way communication, uh, transparency. There's been a lot of action on transparency, less on two-way participatory. So I think e-consultations is one way closer to the two-way. Um, if that law gets passed, and we will try to also, with our powers, to, to push it through, 
um, this is another one. Another could be um, is the open government partnership. It's currently being drafted. In Ukraine, is thought as a fairly weak document. I can tell you at the international level, it's an important document. It's important because countries, through this document, signal to the world what they're committed to. It's not the only solution. The countries then have to implement it. But it is a way to consolidate a lot of different commitments on issues of democracy in one place. In Ukraine, there is a lot of now also exciting initiatives happening, but they may get lost in translation unless you have very good leaders who are speaking out about their initiatives. So I think it's really important to create some cohesive national strategy on e-democracy. This is something that was really, really strongly um, recommended it was number one a recommendation by the different groups. Um, so uh, uh, there will be a roadmap to democracy. We're talking about that to put it as one of the action points under open government partnership. So this will be another way um, to do that. So this is one question. As to Brexit, and very good question. Uh, from my uh, understanding was there was it was a highly mediatized and highly politicized um, campaign. And one of the power of communication technologies is civic education. I would love to see some analysis how much were different tools used to reach out to different audiences. Because there was a kind of a, a tendency, a, a demog demographic kidnap of what I would say. You know, a lot of the elderly uh, were voting, younger people were not voting or uh, so it will be interesting to see analysis how are different instruments then we could see where the gaps are and where could have information technology is being used more proactively or um, concretely but uh, there could have been a lot of different instruments that could have been used in e-democracy and one maybe one parting world word is that e-democracy it's about this it's not single entity uh, defining e-democracy. It's also multiple instruments. It's not one instrument. It's not referendum. It's not a petition. It's not open data. It's the complexity of the instruments that will actually move democracy forward. Uh, and also the offline, not to forget the human interaction. It's not only about technologies. It's what humans end up doing with technology and what it ends up affecting them in their real life. So I will end it. And then. I also would like to add uh, about uh, uh, civil education. I am uh, head of uh, the civil education department. Uh, mm, as Andresa mentioned, mentioned, he is responsible for education of uh, civil servants uh, and uh, so we uh, have now an objective to introduce uh, uh, civil educational course for school children uh, dear friends uh, thank you very much uh, and uh, see you next time.